it's been more than a year since my last typing game video. Time sure does fly when you're slaying hordes of zombies with a motherfucking keyboard shotgun. God damn, this game is cool. Typing of the Dead is back at it again for round two, with its fast-paced gameplay that will have your fingers ready to fall off by the time you're through with it, assuming they can keep up with the copious amount of text that you have to type through. Typing of the Dead 2 is pretty much the same shit, different game. The game being House of the Dead 3, and the shit being typing your ass off to kill zombies and fiends. It's just about as cool as the first one, if you disregard all the things that make HOTD 3 not as good as HOTD 2. Like it being really short and whoever the fuck this guy is taking up all the boss fights with his greedy ass. But the other ones are pretty cool. Giant Sloth do be Giant Sloth. And Audrey 2 asks a bunch of questions that I don't know the answer to because I don't know Japanese. So that means he gets a few free hits on me. But that's okay, because I had tons of fun. I would like to think that mindlessly shooting zombies with a batshit story is honestly enough for anyone to have a good time. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and after I was finished spilling gallons of green goop and trying out all of the various mini-games available to me, I felt like I needed more. My fingers were itching for an edutaining workout. You could say I had the need for speed. Typing but not too fast because I, I type kind of slow. So anyways, I scoured the interweb searching for only the coolest typing games to quench my thirst, and I think I struck gold. Now, before I start talking about a bunch of games you probably have never heard of, I would like to pose a question. What is the purpose of a typing game? To teach the player how to type on a keyboard. That wasn't a trick question at all, I feel as though it is very important to just say that out loud before I go into some of these games. It is traditionally an edutainment genre, and as such, most games under it tend to trip into the same pitfalls as other edutainment genres. This mostly stems from the target demographic for these games, which aren't the children who would be playing them, but the guardians of said children. No kid has ever said, hey mom, I want to play Math Blaster. Come on now. Most parents like buying things that are educational. Video games magically stop rotting your brain and eyes when you have to do some arithmetic to get to the next level. Parents, especially of the non-gamer variety, see school in video game form and that's good enough for them. This basically gives edutainment developers the go-ahead to shit out the bare minimum and slap a popular children's character on the box and wait for the dough to roll in. And because of this, many of the typing games that came out of the video game World Power Japan happen to be anime themed. Which is cool, I guess. Anime is pretty neat. I partake in a bit of Yu Yu Hakusho myself, but a lot of these anime typing games happen to be not so good. In most cases, average at best. They have the characters we all know and love, but are so cheaply made and uninspired, to the point where I don't even think they'd be worth checking out, even for a mega fan of the series. So to start things off, I present to you Saint Seiya Typing. I've never watched Saint Seiya, but I must say that I absolutely love the character designs. Something about it just calls out to me, you know? It just speaks to my soul. However, I cannot say the same for the game itself. The gameplay is entirely composed of typing words and phrases with two still images of characters in the background. I assume they're supposed to be fighting, but there are absolutely no animations to show that they are, so I'll choose to believe that these are staring contests. Seriously though, after a while the characters will show some visible signs of damage, Hell, even one guy strips halfway through the fight. But without the proper animation, I remain unmoved by the action, or lack thereof. It's just a very bare-bones typing game. It does have a little story going on between all the fights, which happens to only have voice acting for one character. And even then, you can barely hear it because the background music is in the foreground for whatever reason. I'm illiterate 
and I don't know the source material, so I wouldn't be able to tell you if it is canon or filler or if it's actually any good. But I like the art style, so I guess it has something going for it. Now the Shita no Joe typing game is more or less the same, albeit slightly better. It still has that same type words to fight some dude gameplay, but it's done with a little more flair. The still images are still doing what still images do, however, this time we are seeing the action before our very eyes. Not as fluid as it could be, but still leagues ahead of whatever the hell Saint Seiya had going on. Even the story bits are more polished. Sort of emulating the experience of a CD drama with its full voice acting and no text. It's mostly there to give some context for a particular fight, not really to serve as a cohesive story to the player, but regardless, it's still nice to have, and much like the rest of the game, it's a step up from what the previous game had to offer. Not a huge step, but a step nonetheless. At the core, Ashita no Joe Typing is still just a simple generic typing game with an IP slapped on the front. And as you would imagine, the initial D typing game has the same issue, with it quite literally being racing scenes from the show that pause every 10 seconds and force you to type something before continuing. It rivals the laziness of Saint Seiya typing and frankly is a little boring. Now, I would be lying to you if I said the music didn't slap, but that's also just Eurobeat goodness ripped straight from the source itself. So what's stopping me from turning off this game and just watching the show? There's nothing this game has to offer that the anime doesn't do better. What's the point? These anime games fail at being, well, games. They're literally all the same, but with the different IPs. They're marketed as fun and educational, but are they really? I don't know, man. They just feel like soulless attempts at getting free money from parents who are just trying to help their kids out. But I will let you know that I did find one that might actually be worth someone's time. So yeah, leave it to Gainax to take things to the next level. Twice. With Neon Genesis Evangelion Typing Project E and Typing Project Advance. If it, is it Evangelion? Am I saying it right? How did, how did, how did, how did, um... How to pronounce Neon Genesis Evangelion. Whatever. I'm gonna just pronounce it however the fuck because I, I didn't get my answer. I don't know what the fuck a Neon Genesis Evangelion is, but this shit looks radical, dude. It's such a flashy and stylized game, and I respect it for not just pulling everything straight from the show. It's certainly not the most educational experience, seeing as you only type single words at a time, and the word pool is very small. On top of that, the lesson mode is really short and, oh my god, I can't type commas. It doesn't really do anything gameplay-wise that would set it apart from the previous three, but it sure as hell tries to look like it does. You're still just typing words, but at least you have a choice as to what typing does, whether it be to blast down angels or to jump from battleship to carrier to whatever type of boat that is. Or even to sing karaoke with your friends and have a good time. Nothing really changes when you switch between these minigames, if you want to call them that. They all have their own set of rules that you can read before you start, but it's all just type the words quickly and don't fuck up at the end of the day. But it does look nice. Very eye-catching and keeps my attention, so that's much more than I can say for the other games. I know I can't speak for anyone else, but it feels like this would be something fans of the series might actually be interested in. Even though at its core, it's still just a very simple typing game, Neon Genesis Evangelion typing brings nothing but style and pizzazz to the table and it works. Not the best thing in the world, but at least it's better than this. But you know what would be better than both of these games combined? If you were to stop watching anime and get some bitches. And by get some bitches, I mean take someone who you are interested in out to dinner, maybe even a record store, in order to get to know them and see if your personalities match up in hopes that they would someday become a very important person in your life. 
someone who you will cherish. Typing of the date, not to be confused with typing of the dead, is a dating sim where you use your keyboard to chat up your future wife. Made by... Hudson Soft. You know, the Bomberman guys. They are the last developer I would expect to put out a game like this, but here we are. The game has three girls you can romance, Makoto, Shizuku, and Ayumi, each with their own set of dates you can take them on, starting with a chance meeting at whatever place they frequent and then taking them somewhere else to spend some time together. Learning more and more about each girl as you go. As you might expect, a typing dating sim happens to have a bunch of reading and typing. Every date has so many different endings that you can achieve just by typing the appropriate responses, with some of them even unlocking CGs of your dates that you can look back on in the photo album. Some are more questionable than others, but it's nice to have. I guess. Kinda brings out the collector's spirit in me. I think this would be a game I could really get into if only I wasn't illiterate, but at least I don't need to know Japanese to enjoy going to the arcade. So it turns out, Beimani came out with a few typing games after the Beatmania one. This one is Poppin' Music Da, and it's kinda better. I mean, on the surface, the two games do look exactly the same, but aesthetically it is just a lot more vibrant and colorful. The tracklist is more varied and boppable. Spicy Peace is a fun song with its familiar spy movie OST motifs and sound effects. Till the End of Time is a certified hood classic. I don't know how I kept my ass in my seat playing that one. I also really like the Little Gambler Z song. Super reminiscent of tokusatsu show openings from the 70s like Kamen Rider and Robot Detective. And now I have the urge to watch Battle Fever J. But at least in this game I don't have to worry about my skill level gatekeeping those songs from me because we actually have two difficulty modes for each song, unlike Beatmania Daw which wanted to see me suffer to no end. All jokes aside, I feel like I was really harsh on it in my first Typing Games video, but I've gotten a lot less sucky and I'm starting to enjoy playing this quite a bit. I've probably clocked in more hours in Poppin' Music Daw than any other game I cover in this video, but I gotta be careful when I pop this bad boy in. I can't play all night long, for I am a wee little lad who has to attend school in the morning. Uh, apparently Tokimeki Memorial has a typing game, and it's... a game. So it's pretty much just a standard typing game that tries to stick with the premise of the original Toki Memo. You play as an average high school boy who has three years of school to experience all the things high school in Japan has to offer. Throughout those three years, you get to spend your time with the girls of your choice in order to get to know them. And by the end, whichever one you have the strongest relationship with will confess their feelings for you. It's something I think could work well as a typing game if done correctly, ideally building off of what Typing of the Date had with those staple Toki Memo mechanics worked in. Unfortunately, this one falls flat on its face. It does stay true to the three years and love meters of the original, but where's the dialogue, dude? I mean, the game looks good. Very easy on the eyes and lots of variety with the date locations, but that's all just visuals. There's no substance. What makes any of the routes the game has to offer different from one another? Nothing. Nothing at all. Toki Memo Typing has the same exact issue as the anime games I talked about earlier. Granted, at least they tried to keep the game true to the series a little bit and somewhat unique, but it's just missing that crucial part, the most important ingredient. The characters and storylines are what attracts people to Tokimeki Memorial, and sadly, it's the only thing missing in this release. After slogging through three years of typing random words and phrases while pretty anime girls stare at you, saying the same ten voice lines at you over and over again, 
you finally get to the moment you've been waiting for. All of your fingers hard work has paid off. The anime girl of your dreams is ready to confess her feelings to you. And... What the hell? We actually have dialogue this time. It's nice to have. I just wish the whole game was like this. But what if I told you it can be? A few years after the first attempt at a Toki Memo typing game, Tokimeki Memorial 2 Typing was released. And it's quite literally everything I could have hoped for. Solving all the issues I had with the first game, ditching the mindless typing, adding dialogue to every level, and streamlining the game's flow. Yes, it inches away from the traditional Toki Memo formula, but it does so in a way that works better for the type of game it is. So during each playthrough, you have a total of 16 dates. The first 10 of which are predetermined, just to give you a chance to know 10 of the girls in the game, then allowing you to choose who to spend your time with on the last six dates. I chose Mei because she's cute and we like tsundere's over here. But yeah, I really dig this one. I haven't played Tokimeki Memorial 2 myself, but I would imagine that this game is made up of abridged versions of all the girls' routes, showing off some key moments for the characters. At the end of some levels, you even get visual novel segments that you can just sit back and read. It's just a very comfy experience, you know, and it gets even closer to what I would call a great typing game. I'm going to fly for you. My. God. Look at them go. <sighs> I feel like I miss out on a lot of chill-ass games like this one. I do enjoy my fair share of zombie hunting and saving the world, but sometimes I just want to chill with my homies, and since I don't have any, this frog will just have to do. You know, I've always wondered who the fuck this cat is. Like, I knew he had a game on PlayStation 1 where you would use the PlayStation Pocket, but outside of that and the few cameo appearances in other games, I really don't know much about Toro Inoue. Apparently, he has like 9 million fucking games, a TV show, and a movie, and not a single one has left Japan, which is absolutely hilarious to me. It got me wondering, why the hell is Japan gatekeeping such a popular franchise? And after playing Doko Demo Isho for only a few minutes, it all made sense. The vibes are just immaculate, and there's no way the West would ever be ready for it. It's like if you took the chillness of Animal Crossing and bumped it up seven chill notches. It feels so good to play. But I'm not here to talk about Doko Demo Isho. I actually wanted to talk about one of the other games, Onsen Mo Isho, the second typing game in the series. And I'm covering this one, not because it's more interesting, but because I couldn't get the first one to work. In this game, you take the gang to a nice ski resort just to hang out, teach them new words, and watch Toro complain about how cold it is outside. Like, you would think he would bring a coat or something, but no, he insists on being nude everywhere he goes. The game is pretty much what you would expect from a typing Dokodemo Isho. The gameplay of the original game perfectly meshes with the typing, and as a result, doesn't really change the formula much. I mean, you're still teaching the Pokepee new words, but instead of using a D-pad, you use a keyboard. Not only for the new words, but also for the dialogue choices, and a few mini-games that come up every once in a while. 
for the most part, the typing itself is barely there. You're just chilling with the boys, hitting the onsen, singing karaoke. The whole game is just super cute and low key. This isn't a typing game with Toro's face slapped on it, but a Toro game that just so happens to have typing in it. It stays true to the franchise and doesn't come off as a cheap cash grab. And that is what sets typing games like this apart from other spin-offs such as Mario Teaches Typing for example. MTT isn't a Mario game. Sure, Mario is on the cover and can be found literally everywhere in the game, but it's nothing but a regular old typing tutor disguised in such a manner to trick children into learning things. While not inherently malicious seeing as it's actually a decent tool for learning how to type, a Mavis beacon for the youth. It is just that, a tool, not a game. I am more fascinated by the typing games that aim past the bare minimum and try utilizing the keyboard to create something that can be viewed as more than a typing tutor. Onsen Moisho and Tokimeki Memorial Typing 2 are good examples of this, staying true to their roots as much as they can while changing what needs to be changed in order to make the game work. I understand translating most games into ones of the typing variety could prove quite difficult, and there were certainly times where this translation went wrong, such as Puyo Puyo Da, the typing Puyo Puyo game. It attempts to keep the core gameplay, but as a result creates a somewhat lackluster experience. It looks like Puyo Puyo, sounds like Puyo Puyo, it even smells like Puyo Puyo, yet something is off about it. It's a little dumbed down. Gone are the lovable garbage Puyos. Well, lovable when they're on my opponent's screen, but not mine. No longer will you get the satisfaction of dropping a shit ton of them on top of your friend's screen as you watch them shed a tear. Instead of causing mayhem with them, there's an enemy life bar you must deplete by matching Puyos and typing the phrase that comes afterwards correctly. And it's super easy. It takes quite a while to finish the later levels, but that's just it. It doesn't get harder, it's just more time consuming. It definitely tries though. It still feels like a Puyo Puyo game of course, and it even has some extra game modes that are slightly different from the story mode, providing a little more challenging gameplay, but at the end of the day I'd rather just play any other Puyo Puyo game and have some real fun. Look, all I'm saying is that Super Puzzle Fighter would never do this to me. Not the semicolons too. So, for the most part, typing games have been a thing of the past, late 90s and early 2000s. It's not really something we see too often outside of website-based stuff and that Typing of the Dead game Sega put out almost a decade ago. But even though many established developers have all but forgotten about the genre, it seems that typing games are currently going through some sort of revival, albeit a very low-key one, mostly stemming from the indie community. And one of the more popular ones that caught my attention was the Texorcist, the story of Ray Bibia, an experimental fusion of typing and Danmaku. Danmaku, or its English equivalent, Bullet Hell, are shoot 'em ups that only exist to stress you out, with complex patterns and mazes of bullets raining down, forcing you to make the most calculated movements in order to make it through. Which is hard enough as it is, but what if I made you type out passages not only in English but in Latin too while you dodge countless death balls? I wouldn't blame you for thinking that these two genres would not be compatible with one another, but The Texorcist is surprisingly a very smooth playing game, and more importantly a very fun one as well. Definitely something that's very easy to get into, but you're going to have to put in those hours if you ever want to get any good at it. The intense feeling you get from constantly switching between dodging bullets and typing whenever you have a chance is pretty invigorating. The dope ass OST only amplifies this feeling. It really makes all the fights feel epic. It's a good game. 
there really isn't anything I, the king of complaints, can say about it. It's very different from many typing games that came out before it in that it doesn't offer typing lessons or claims that it will teach you to type faster than you already do. Educational content is just not on the table. Texercis uses typing for one thing only, and that is as a vessel for fun. It feels like a video game where others in the same genre don't. The challenging yet rewarding gameplay, the witty writing and little horror references here and there really make a well-rounded experience. Something that I would love to come back to sometime in the future and hopefully finish it because it took me little over an hour to kill the spider lady and I haven't worked up the courage to take on the next boss yet. But this isn't the first time an indie dev has broken free from the prison of edutainment that has had typing games in a chokehold for all of these years. 30 years ago, Sword of Kumdor was released by Michiaki Tsubaki, a rather old RPG Maker game that was quite unique in the sense that it is a typing RPG. You play as a galactic keyboard warrior, teaching those worthy of the blind touch of death in your own dojo. Even though you are very successful and are considered a master of your combat style by many, you still feel like you're missing something. With this in mind, you decide to go on a voyage of self-discovery and truth. After all the preparations are made, you climb aboard a spaceship and make your way to Kumdor, a distant planet. And by make your way, I mean almost die in a crash that makes you lose all of your money, experience points, and most of the keys on your keyboard. Luckily, you still have your life, so you decide to push on and explore Kumdor to not only reacquire your keyboard skills, but also figure out what the hell is going on here. Your quest mostly consists of moving from town to town in the most inconvenient way possible. The space key turns your little man clockwise 90 degrees, and the F key makes him walk forward. It's really awkward at first, but you get used to it. I guess it's to force you to keep your fingies on the home keys at all times since the J key is used for selecting things on the menu among other things. In towns, you do normal JRPG things such as talk to each and every NPC with a sizable amount of them saying the darndest things for shits and giggles. You can go to the end to heal up for a fee or check out the town store where you can buy keys in order to defeat stronger enemies and successfully cast spells that will help you on your journey. Out in the fields, you navigate through this strange world filled with some really abstract ass creatures. I mean, you have your classic JRPG enemy, the slime, but is it really? But then again, that is the only traditional enemy and everything else just happens to be named after keys whether they be the name of a letter written alphabetically or semicolon. Yeah, Sword of Kumdor is kinda strange, but in a good way. And I feel like it has something special that makes it stand out from the rest of the typing games I've talked about today. Now, what that special thing is, I have no clue. But I just feel it when I play. Sure, it does have those very same typing drills that could be found in almost every other typing game, but I feel like SOK just does a good job of contextualizing the typing gameplay, and that's what makes it work. Even without the typing, Sword of Kumdor would probably still be a neat little RPG. It has a very solid foundation and a quirky yet lovable direction. I dig it. It's good stuff. It would seem that during the future and the past, indie devs have been some of the only ones capable of pushing the typing genre to its limits, creating unique games that put the enjoyment of the players first before education. That's not to say that all the other games I talked about are complete dog shit. I mean, besides Saint Seiya, I had a good time with all of these games. The Neon Genesis games were aesthetically pleasing, Tokimeki Memorial 2 Typing and Typing of the Date were interesting crossovers into the world of dating sims, and quite frankly the former has fueled an urge in me to play the original Tokimemo games. I finally got to play the Texorcist and man, I loved it as much as I hoped I would. 
and I found out that the Dokodemo Isho games are chill as fuck, and I need to try out more of those. So, you know, a lot of good things came out of making this video. Typing games will always be super interesting to me, but it's such a shame that they're just not commercially viable for most developers, nor are they very desirable for your average gamer bro. I just hope the indie community keeps games like these alive for the seven of us who enjoy them. And they are working on them, slowly but surely. There really hasn't been anything that's caught my eye, but I'm holding out for something cool in the future to come along. And with that being said, the cool typing game saga comes to an end. Hey! Don't leave me all alone! Hey! Where is everybody?